Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In April I read six books and I will run through them now and tell you what I thought of them. Just as a reminder, my rating system of three stars is one is good, two is better and three is best. I don't finish a book if I don't enjoy it, so I did actually like all of these books, but that is how I rank them. The first book I want to talk about is What I Know For Sure by Oprah Winfrey. Oprah was once asked in an interview, what do you know for sure? And it kind of stumped her at the time, but it made her think about it a lot afterwards. And she actually had a column in her magazine, O Magazine, about what I know for sure. And she would share a thought each, I guess, month. I don't know, is the magazine monthly? Anyway, she would share her thoughts in her column. And this book is basically her columns curated and edited and put together in a book. I did enjoy it. Um, I kind of read it when I was sleep deprived and not really wanting to delve too deeply into anything. So I think some of it just kind of washed over me. But there were a couple of things that really stood out to me and resonated with me. It is a good book. I did enjoy it. But maybe because of the time that I read it that I wasn't really like into it, I'm going to give it one star. The next book I want to talk about is called The Full Cupboard of Life and it is one of the number one ladies detective agency books by Alexander McCall Smith. I love this series. It was recommended to me by my friend Amanda and I've so been enjoying the books. I don't know if this is book number four or five, something like that, but I'm loving them and I'm kind of reading my way through the series. It is set in Zimbabwe and it reminds me of South Africa in the best way. Since leaving 17 years ago it's kind of easier to focus on the reasons we left and the things we didn't like about South Africa or don't like about South Africa um, but it's kind of good to have a reminder of the good stuff now and again. Just little things like in this book she talks about and she describes the process of this little boy playing with ant lions and it was such a reminder to me. I had totally forgotten about ant lions and it just reminded me of playing with them when I was a child. For those of you who don't know, an ant lion is a little insect that he digs like an like a conical hole in the sand and he waits down there. And when an ant comes by and kind of slides down the side, he jumps out and eats it. So you can tickle the sand with a piece of um, leaf or stick and when the sand falls down into the hole, the ant lion jumps out and you can flick him out and check out this little insect and it was something that I used to do as a child that I'd completely forgotten about and it's little things like that about these books that just remind me of my childhood or remind me of what used to be home for me and I'm just enjoying the series. Also Alexander McCall Smith has this way of writing that is so unique and it's so hard to describe but it is so funny. It's like he's laughing at the characters but not in a derogatory way, more in a in a kind of affectionate, on people funny kind of a way. It's hard to describe, but it's just so funny, some of the things that he writes, and I'm really enjoying that. I'm going to give this book two out of three, and in particular, I went to recommend it to my friend Cammie. I think she would enjoy them. The third book I read is called In the Company of Cheerful Ladies, and it is the next book in the series that I've just been talking about. Also, two out of three, also really enjoyed. The next book I read is part of a series. It's the first book of the series. It's called Still Life by Louise Penny, and it is the Inspector Armand Gamache series. I'll read the blurb to you. Chief Inspector Armand Gamache and his team of investigators are called into the scene of a suspicious death in a rural village south of Montreal and yet a world away. Jane Neal, a longtime resident of Three Pines, has been found dead in the woods. The locals are certain it's a tragic hunting accident and nothing more, but Gamache smells something foul this holiday season and is soon certain that Jane died at the hands of someone much more sinister than a careless bow hunter. The notes that I wrote about this book was that I enjoyed it, but that there was something just slightly strange about it. And again, I can't put it into words. I don't even know what it is. It just, it was just slightly strange. I don't know why. I might reread it or, you know, read the next one in the series and think like, what was I thinking? But that was my first impression of this book. I did give it two out of three stars and I am planning on reading more in the series. So it's a good book, just like a standard murder mystery, I guess. 
I'm not in a huge rush to get the next book out. There's other books that I want to read first, but it's good and I'll continue reading the series. The next book is Night to School by Lee Child and this is one of the Jack Reacher books. The Blue Breeds. It's 1996 and Reacher is still in the army. In the morning they'd given him a medal and in the afternoon they sent him back to school. That night he's off the grid, out of sight, out of mind. Two other men are in the classroom, an FBI agent and a CIA analyst. Each is a first-rate operator, each is fresh off a big win, and each is wondering what the hell they are doing there. Then they find out. A jihadist sleeper cell in Hamburg, Germany, has received an unexpected visitor. A Saudi courier seeking safe haven while waiting to rendezvous with persons unknown. A CIA asset undercover inside its cell has overheard the courier whisper a chilling message. The American wants $100 million. For what and from whom? Reacher and his two new friends are told to find the American. Reacher recruits the best soldier he has ever worked with, Sergeant Francis Neagley. Their mission heats up in more ways than one, while always keeping their eyes on the prize. If they don't get their man, the world will suffer an epic act of terrorism. I thought this was the second one in the series, but it turns out it was like book 21. I don't know how I got my wires crossed, but it kind of supports the theory that you could just read them in any order and it doesn't really matter because they each stand alone, which I found to be true. I am going to continue reading the series in order if I can though. I did enjoy it. I gave it also 2 out of 3. There was some gratuitous male posturing and violence but other than that I enjoyed it and it's a good ripping tale, bit of action. I actually really enjoyed the fact that it was set in 1996. I think it was written back then as well because there are no cell phones and there's no Google and it's kind of fun to see an adventure play out without those things because it would just play out so differently now. So yeah, two out of three I would recommend this book and the series. The next book on my list is The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. This book was actually recommended by John and Sherry Petersick from Young House Love. I saw them recommended I think on Instagram and Grant read it and I read it and we both enjoyed it. The Blue Breeds. On a flight from London to Boston, Ted Severson meets the stunning Lily Kintner. Over martinis, the strangers play a game in which they reveal intimate details about themselves. But what begins as playful banter between Ted and Lily takes a turn when Ted claims half seriously that he'd like to kill his wife. Lily surprises him by saying she'd like to help. Back in Boston, Ted and Lily forge an unusual bond and talk about the ways Ted can get out of his marriage, but Lily has her own dark history she's not sharing with Ted. As Ted begins to fall in love with Lily, he grows anxious about any holes in their scheme that could give them away. Before long, the two are pulled into a lethal game of cat and mouse, one in which both are not likely to survive when all is said and done. I really enjoyed that there were different people's perspective throughout the book, like it's, it's written with different characters as the first person. I quite like that. Grant does not like that. He struggles to keep track of who is talking and what's going on. Um, I did at points, but usually only when I stopped in the middle of a chapter and when I began reading again, I was like, okay, who's talking? But I actually did enjoy that you could see the whole story unfold from different people's perspectives. I found the book compelling, it kept me going, I wanted to find out what happened in the end and I enjoyed the little twists along the way and I enjoyed the ending and so I'm going to give this three stars and make it my book of the month. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the books that I read in April. I'd love to know if you've read any of them and what you thought of them, so leave me a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.